And a very good evening to you. This is Easy Friday. My name is Shiksha Aurora as I bring to you the top stories tonight right here on KBC Channel 1. The hashtag is Easy Friday. Talk to us on social media. Tell us where you're watching from and that's how you can interact with us. My uh, Twitter handle is at Shiksha Aurora as well. Now what exactly do we have lined up for you today. Um, we have the top stories tonight when it comes to the CS's handing over. Plus, of course, a new cancer center that could potentially change things when it comes to cancer diagnosis and screening. Apart from that, we also have the top stories in the world of business and sports. So make sure you stay right here. But for now, it's time for tonight's highlights. KRA to raise at least three trillion by the end of the next financial year and to double the current collection in five years. The Kenya Revenue Authority is given a target of raising three trillion shillings by end of this financial year. Change of guard at ministries as new cabinet secretaries take charge. Milestone in breast cancer management as Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital opens modern diagnosis and treatment center. All right, and tonight's top story. Now, President William Ruto has tasked Kenya Revenue Authority to collect three trillion shillings by end of the current financial year, ending June 2023, and to double the current collections to six trillion shillings in five years. While fetting the top tax players of the year, the president told Kerry to take positive steps towards making the business environment favorable to traders and employ alternative mechanisms of collecting tax as well as expanding the tax base while sealing revenue leakages. Take a look. The annual tax collection hit the 2 trillion mark after KRA collected a record 2.03 trillion shillings in the last financial year 2021-2022, surpassing the set target by close to 150 billion shillings. And today, whilst President William Ruto commended the taxman for revenue mobilization, he also challenged the KRA to collect 3 trillion shillings by the end of the current financial year ending next June. Continuity, investment sustainability, due process and the rule of law. The consequences are painful to contemplate. Our GDP has risen to Kenya shillings 12 trillion, yet KRA only raised about 14% of GDP in revenues last year. In the past, KRA was able to raise 18% of GDP. If we collect the same target today, then we would have raised an extra 400 billion shillings and to double the current collection in five years. This, he says, will be achieved through expansion of the tax base, simplifying the taxpayers' processes, sealing revenue leakages, as well as leveraging trade facilitation technology to efficiently manage border points and to promote the efficiency of cross-border trade. Every exemption denies Kenyans the right to benefit from national resources and is unfair to the loyal taxpayers who do the right thing. It is not an accident that revenue mobilization, though improving, remains far below its potential. We have and we are continuing to initiate comprehensive uh, re review of the tax policy red scheme where we seek to strengthen tax administration through the use of technology and taxpayers' engagement. President Ruto said every Kenyan above 18 years should be issued with a Kenya Revenue Authority's pin, qualifying them to be taxpayers. He challenged the taxman to embrace technological solutions and lighten the tax-paying burden through universal tax registration, adding that a unified tax system is the way to go. That the national government too is not at all impressed where when you walk to an office you cannot tell the original color of the wall because the whole wall is full of multiple licenses those licenses must give way to show people for people to appreciate 
the original color of the wall by having a single permit. So all permits would be collapsed under one. Our business people just be able to pay digitally on their phone and not have to go through around our offices trying to comply on paying of fire license, I don't know, water, health. From our part, it's going to be one. The president told KRA to shift from the overtaxing of trade and undertaxing of wealth to enable the wealthy bear the appropriate burden. Warimu Jenga for Easy Friday. In other news, it's all system go for the Kenya Kwanzaa administration as number of cabinet secretaries took over their new mandate in their respective offices today. Outgoing cabinet secretaries Friday had to bid farewell and usher in the new crop of cabinet to start their roles. Ruth Womboy highlights their promises to the public on their first day in office. So happy to see her. Yes. Friday saw a behave of activities in most government ministries as new CSs took over from their predecessors. <laughs> At Harambe House, Professor Margaret Kobia officially handed over the Ministry of Public Service, Gender and Affirmative Action to the new CS. Aisha Juma Katana. We, we want to wish you all the best and uh, you'll be providing that effective leadership as policy level and also as a strategic direction in line with the national development goals. That is the role of the uh, uh, CS. My vision and desire is to run a highly cohesive and citizen responsive ministry guided by the values and principles of governance and the various policies already in place. Allow me to appreciate the outgoing uh, cabinet secretary for her strong leadership and hard working during her tenure in this ministry. I look forward to continue her legacy and draw upon her wisdom. At Magios, the CS for water sanitation and irrigation, Alice Wahome took charge promising to enhance access to water. Government never stops, even for one second. And so going forward, if you require any sort of support, <coughs> please uh, let me know. Uh, once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. now it's my pleasure to have, to, to have you sit on this seat. I will not move the microphone because now this is your seat. And I know that there is a lot that I need to go through to read uh, since this is a, a new challenge for me. But I believe that with the support of the entire ministry, our agencies and our partners, I will be able to deliver to the expectations of the country. Of course, the expectations are huge. We all know that we are, we are facing a, a very big challenge of drought. At the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Heritage, outgoing CS Najib Balala ushered in his successor Penina Malonza, whose focus is on adoption of new but tested strategies to turn around the sector. We're going to relook at our manifesto as Kenya Kwanzaa because every ministry had an eye lighter on what, on the direction that the present his Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto wants us to drive this ministry. Kenyans now are way to see the actualization of the Kenya Kwanza plan. Ruth Wamboy reporting for Easy Friday. Now, moving on, the fight against breast cancer in the country has received a major boost after a new comprehensive breast care centre was launched. The new centre put up at Kenyatta University, teaching referral and research hospital, that's KUTRRH, hopes to enhance quality cancer diagnosis, treatment and patient care across the country. Kenya reports an aggregate of 42,000 cases of cancer annually. Raising awareness remains key to early diagnosis and treatment, according to Dr. Caroline Nyongesa. Having said that, we know that uh, during this month we are connecting communities and creating hope 
and uh, talking about early detection and treatment of cancer. If we look at Kenyatta National Hospital, we see over 6,000 new cancer patients every year, and those who come through the cancer treatment center are about 3,000 uh, to 3,500 annually. During an event organized by Kenyatta National Hospital, the public and members of staff got a chance to undergo breast cancer screening. 54-year-old Njeri Kamau is undergoing screening for the first time in her life. The patients are taken through different tests from blood pressure, blood sugar and weight measurements. The screening involves breast examination. Mimi nimefundisha ni vizuri kufanyangwa kufanywa screening especially kupimwa ugonjwa wa kisukari na kupimwa hata weight kama mimi nimeambiwa height yangu na weight yangu haipelekani ni kwa obese. Ninafaa ni reduce Contrary to common beliefs, men are also at risk of breast cancer. With breast cancer, but uh, I have, I have uh, reliable information that it happens, it occurs to men, and that is why probably we, uh, we need to probably sensitize uh, men more to come out and uh, actually have the screening done. Nutrition is key to wedding off non-communicable diseases. The processed foods are here with us, but we need to know that what they are and what uh, they can do to our bodies and as compared to the non-processed foods. So it is more healthy to choose the foods that have not been processed as compared to the ones that are processed. As part of its corporate social responsibility, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation also donated colostomy bags for patients with colorectal cancer in support of cancer patients in the country. Meanwhile, the Breast Cancer Unit at the Kenyatta University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital has received a major boost following the launching of a new comprehensive breast cancer center. With breast cancer cases spiraling in the country, the center will aid in accommodating the numbers and promote efficient, quick access, affordable and quality cancer diagnosis and treatment. Speaking after launching the new center, Principal Secretary of Health Susan Mochache says that with early detection, cancer can be cured and also called for new approach on treating and managing cancer in the country. As we continue to put efforts in strengthening our health system, to ensure that there is equitable and there is accessible cancer prevention and control services, we realize the importance of delivering faster and earlier diagnosis and better experiences for our patients. This initiative also enhances the hospital's focus in offering evidence-based care through research. Opicho Chemtai, Easy Friday. All right, now moving on. A Kambu politician, Gladys Chania, accused of orchestrating the murder of her tycoon husband, will now formally be charged. This is after prosecution wound up the process of piecing together evidence that will be used to prosecute Chania and her accomplice in the murder of her late husband. The politician who is yet to be released from police custody, even after being granted bail last week, will now face murder charges in connection with the killing of her husband, George Mwangi. It emerged that the Directorate of Criminal Investigations is yet to verify sureties presented by Chania and therefore are yet to be released from police custody. Chania was presented in court Friday with the prosecution revealing that she will undergo a psychiatrist test on Tuesday next week at Madari Mental Facility pending her formal charging. We've made a decision to charge the first and second accused with the offence of murder and the information is there in the file and this morning uh, as a matter of procedure we are appearing before you for purposes of directions. In the meantime, Kiambu Senior Resident Magistrate Wilson Rading has directed the prosecution to arraign Chania and her co-accused Maurice Mbuga on Monday before the High Court to face the murder charges. Your Honor, those orders have been completely frustrated by the officers of the DCIA and they were lapsing today. This application before you this morning is merely a face-saving exercise to defeat the orders you made and regularize the further detention of our client. As the file 
miscellaneous 442 has been mentioned here to set the record straight. The orders that were granted on that file 442 or 22 was to expire on Monday. You know? So this file let it be placed before the judge on Monday for the appropriate orders. The late George Mwangi was laid to rest at his Mangu home in Gatundu North. Chania did not attend the burial owing to the failure by the DCI to release her from police custody. John Jacob Curia, Easy Friday. Now, Meru Governor Kawira Mwangaza has castigated a petition by members of the county assembly seeking to impeach her, terming the move as a witch hunt. In a letter to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, the Mwangaza refuted claims of nepotism, ownership of a local Meru television station and misappropriation of public resources. As Sarafina Robi now reports, the governor's husband, Murega Baichu, similarly lodged a complaint saying he was being subjected to gender-based violence for not being allowed access to the governor's official residence and vehicle. Now this and more from the courts. Take a look. A day after Miro members of County Assembly filed a petition seeking to impeach their governor, Kawira Mongaza. Mongaza has come out to refute their allegations, maintaining that her husband does not draw his salary from the county coffers. He has never received a single coin from the government. He is doing it voluntarily. She also defended her appointment of her system in her security retinue. Is your bodyguard supposed to go the process? Am I any competitive? You got a bodyguard. Yes, I'm entitled to more than three of them. What's wrong if I get one of them being my sister? Nasija Mwajiri, I'm a Jiri wana Kenya police. I just requested. Mwangaza denied owning a local Meru TV station, urging members of the county assembly to support it. Her husband, Morega Baishu, complained of gender-based violence for not being allowed to the governor's official residence. Mimi sasa sipewe kunagali lile na kama na tena sipatui lift na ye, tunapoenda mkutano, inabini na tukuta either hile bonda bonda chap chap. Uh, na pia sasa tulala, imebindi ye, analala, distance, official. Mimi naenda kulala nyumbani eh, kwetu ambapo tumejenga. Elsewhere, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, has recommended that the police officers arrested over the death of baby Samantha Pendo in the 2017 general elections be charged. The officers will be charged with murder as the police officers arrested over kills that erupted in the area will be charged for torture and rape. At the Supreme Court, an application filed by members of County Assembly claiming that the holding of 2017 general elections on the 8th of August had reduced their term in office has been dismissed. The court termed their claim as lacking merit, saying as per the constitutional provisions, their term had ended. Meanwhile, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation Acting Editor-in-Chief Millicent War has, through the Kenya Union of Journalist Lawyer Ibrahim Odor, presented orders from the Judicial Review to Magistrate Eunice Newton, suspending proceedings of the lower court until a matter on alleged contempt is heard and determined. Finally, Abdul Rahman Imran Juma, alias Abdul Rahman, who is wanted in the United States of America to face charges of conspiracy to commit word fraud, is seeking stay orders before Justice Daniel Logambo against his extraditions. We don't have a request bundle in extradition. We have an extradition bundle. And then in that bundle, there is a request that is a specific statutory document. And I am submitting my lord. It was not there. This was opposed by prosecution. My lord, it is our humble submission that the learned trial magistrate strictly followed the provisions of CAP 76 and did not in any way infringe on the rights of the fugitive criminal. Serafina Roby for Easy Friday. All right, and with that, it's time for us to go on our first commercial break, but we will be back very shortly. Don't go too far. This is Easy Friday only on KBC Channel 1. We'll be back shortly.
kupata zaburi 18 mstari wa pili dial star 811 star 817 hash Mwenyezi Mungu ni mwamba wangu ngome yangu na mkombozi wangu Mungu wangu mwamba wangu ninayemkimbilia ninapohitaji kuwa salama Zaburi 18 mstari wa pili Zaburi 18 mstari wa pili dial star 811 star 817 hash star 811 star 817 hash Yaani sasa wewe umeniweka hapa nje kuniambia sio chure nikishakati yako nini unataka nini? Haya <laughs> <laughs> basi teke 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 teke. <laughs> I mean wait. Do you guys still get some beating from your parents? As big as some of you are. Eh, hey, our parents comes from different schools of thought. Some of us are disciplined because of the candy we received. For Julia it's always papa yake. Ah, ya wache. That was a secret. Upsi, the sickness is out with the cat. Wara, we are bana chua mataka yote na tuba yote. Ah, that thing is for the people. We imagine eh, mutaka yote akipata yote. Huyo mukaganua atasema nini? The world's biggest sporting event is here with us. The FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar. KBC Television will air live 28 selected matches while radio will beam live all the 64 matches. We would like to bring to the attention of the public that KBC is the only station that has exclusive 2022 FIFA World Cup free to air FTA broadcast rights for both TV and radio in the Kenya territory and no other media outlet. Therefore, catch all the FIFA World Cup action live and exclusive on KBC TV and radio. KBC is indeed your true sports partner. Welcome back. Now, the Kenya Forest Service is planning to plant a total of five million trees over the next five years as a way of mitigating the drought situation in the country that is occasioned by unreliable weather patterns and the need to improve forest cover. Now, these efforts coming at a time that the government has called on Kenyans to embark to tree planting efforts to reverse climate change. Kenya Forest Service Board Chairman Peter Kenywa said under the direction of the Kenya Forest Service, all citizens will have a role to play by planting 300 trees each. He added that the incoming recruitment of 2,700 forest rangers and 600 forest officers, as directed by President William Ruto, will boost the conservation and protection of forests in the country. Due to these concerted efforts, there has been ongoing for the last three years, Kenya's forest cover has increased to 8.8%, whereas tree cover has increased to 12.13%. Elsewhere, Meru Lokot staff, together with government partners and primary school pupils, undertook tree planting at the banks of Kanyoro Stream in Meru Town. The stakeholders, who also cleaned the stream while marking 10 years since the start of the environmental court in Meru Lokots. They urge Kenyans to preserve the environment. To mewaunga mahakimu wetu ambao wanatunza environment so that uh, to clean uh, environment yetu na tuifanye safi haswa tukijua ya kwamba uh, vile climate change inaendelea ku affect ama kutesa maisha ya binadamu wakati huu tuko na njaa and in Tana River the county government has launched a water tracking exercise targeting water stress areas that are far from the river as drought continues to bite in the county. The leaders noted that the water tracking exercise will reduce the severity of the drought and improve water supply to residents. Tana River, Tana North, na Tana Delta, kwamba magari ambayo tutazindua leo na mengine ambayo tunaendelea kurekebisha yatawasaidia kupunguza makali ya janga hili la ukame. Finally, county leaders in Nyandarua have flagged off a consignment of relief food meant to be distributed in various parts of the county. The leaders said the food will be shared equally and that security is set to ensure the food is shared on a need basis with the most affected getting the relief food. 
sisi kama viongozi vile tuko hapa pamoja na commissioner na wale madisc na viongozi wote leo tumesikizana hii chakula itafikia mwananchi na hakuna hata pembe moja ya chakula itaenda kando ili wananchi wetu waweze ku, ku, kuhifadhi maisha yao Colin Shadrock for Easy Friday Now, when it came into effect in April 2022, the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia had a clear mandate of fully implementing the Somali Transition Plan by December 2024. How is the progress six months into the assignment after ATMIS took over from Africa Mission in Somalia? Amisom? Yusuf Farah was in Somalia and filed a comprehensive report. Here now is a first in a three-part series, ATMIS, The Final Push. The African Union Transition Mission in Somalia came into operations on the 1st of April 2022 after its authorization by the African Union and mandated by the United Nations Security Council, AU Peace and Security Council Resolution 2068 of 2022. The mandate of ATMIS is to fully implement the Somali Transition Plan. The multi-dimensional mission involves the military, police and civilian component in its mandate overview which is to support the capacity building of the integrated Somali security and police forces, reduce the threat posed by Al-Shabaab, support peace and reconciliation efforts in Somalia and conduct the phased handover of security responsibilities to Somalia. All this is done with the Somali forces taking the lead role. For the success of this mission that is supposed to run until December 2024 when the final exit is expected to occur by ATMIS forces, five countries namely Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Djibouti and Burundi have jointly contributed 18,586 troops to ATMIS for defensive and offensive mechanisms. These efforts are complemented by police contributing countries Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Uganda and Zambia who also provide mentorship to the Somali police forces as well as helping in capacity building. The police unit has a force strength of 1,040. In our first day in Mogadishu, Somalia, we met with the forces commandant Lieutenant General Diomed Ndekeya. He says since its deployment, ATMIS has embraced tactics that will ensure the successful implementation of the transition plan. Our effort is on holding the terrain uh, by collocation of our FOB with Somali forces. We don't leave any forward operating biases when we don't see that Somalis are not are able to handle it defensively. And all this is also being supported by the local uh, forces and the support of the local population. So this is a game changer in, <clears throat> in Somalia if it is replicated in all sectors. We will not, not have Al-Shabaab probably by end of 2023. On the police side, we link up with contingent commander of the Kenya police in the mission, Alex Minyao, who says their mentorship coupled with the civilian and military collaboration is slowly steering the Somali police forces in the right direction. We look at uh, discipline and we look at accountability. Um, we, we want the Somali police to reach a point where they can manage the internal security of this country independently. ATMIS and military, police and civilian components are authorized to conduct several tasks. Among them, conduct joint simultaneous targeted offensive operations across all its six sectors in coordination with the Somali security forces to degrade the Al-Shabaab and affiliates linked to ISIL. Configure ATMIS in terms of composition, structure, disposition and equipment to best hand over security responsibility of Somali security forces, support Somali security forces in clearing main supply routes, including recovered from Al-Shabaab, provide combat mentorship to the Somali National Army, enhance Somali National Army capacity to conduct civil military coordination activities and ensure compliance with the rules and engagement of international humanitarian law, international human rights and all international best practices. The expected timeline of ATMIS assignment which commenced on the 1st of April 2022 is two years and eight months. This was arrived at following the assessment by the Security Council on its four phases guided transition. 
The phases begin with the reconfiguration stage followed by jointly shaping and clearing operations and handing over of forward operating bases. This is then followed by phase 3 which is operations and handing over of the forward operating bases and finally liquidation and withdrawal of ATMIS. Apart from the troops and police forces, ATMIS also boasts of 70 civilian staff expected to increase to 85 from 1st of January 2023. The first drawdown of 2000 security forces is expected on the 31st of December 2022. Isufa reporting for Easy Friday from Mogadishu, Somalia. That's some brilliant reporting there by Yusuf. Now moving on. While social media has become the main source of communication for most of the young people, it is also the main source of misinformation. The reports that Mount Longan erupted sent the savage netizens to scavenge through different verified news stations to find out if the information was true. The outcome was simply a case of literal wildfires and hot air. Take a look. Accessing any kind of information in this era is literally at our fingertips. Better yet, the information has been simplified on social media platforms. But how often do you fall prey to fake news? Fake news in our era literally makes for headlines. If not contained, things could get out of hand. Yesterday, a video with the dwindling, dancey, bright red figures alleged to be Mount Longonot erupting flooded the social media platforms, sending shockwaves through the masses. These pushed the authorities to investigate the matter, which was found out to be normal cases of wildfires. That, without a doubt, invited the unforgiving netizens to criticize the matter. Vincent tweeted, Hamuogopi kudanganya watu? Librian 1, unverified and total propaganda. 2%, 2%, cut a sim. Don't like disturbers of the head, you understand? Tabo tweeted, Wild bushfire and dominator eruption, Morris responded <laughs> in a waka kamatochi. Talamwet, with a huge urge to investigate further, asked, So nobody else has a better video. I have seen this one circulating, shaking my head. KOTOCS tweeted, Watu walichagua CRE and Agriculture High School, ndio wako huku wakisema kuna volcanic eruption Mount Longonot. Bure kabisa. Egumia, single people in East Africa. There are reports of volcanic eruption at Mount Longonot in Kenya. If you rush there quickly, you might find yourself a lava. But with the case of volcanic eruption turning into a wild goose chase, reports on the closure of the Hilton Hotel are pretty solid. And with youngins on the internet hell-bent on exploring fancy hotels so they can post a snap on their timeline, Hilton's exit has turned into fodder for content. After Hilton tweeted closing doors, Kisika without hesitation asked, What about its windows? Veteran tweeted, are they selling their cutlery and equipment? Emmanuel's idea, waweke ikue hostels. <laughs> Laughing emoji. Tumefurahia, sasa hata tumeacha kulia, sasa tunasherekea. Nisherekea kubwa sana, hata wazikuwezi kusema mengi, thank you very much. Sako, and I have never ever stepped inside, to which he was responded to by Mr. Fixit. And whom do you want us to blame? Samko, kegwa na uza ngapi niende kabla wafunge? Just me, hiyo itakuwa stall sasa. Mwiruri happiness, ata wafungulie hiyo footpath wa menyakuwa tupitie. Truly Mwiruri should be voted the advocate of Futsubishi and Volkswagen. Nagwambia upuzi yamba uko Kenya ni mwingi sana. Well, that's it for us. Catch you next week on Savage Netizens. For Easy Friday, I am Teresa Mutai.
Always quite an insight there, and that is uh, Teresa Mutai with the latest when it comes to social media. And moving on, each year the Lamu Maulidi celebrations bring together thousands of Muslims across East Africa, Middle East, and other parts of the world. The Maulidi Historical Festival celebrates the birth of Prophet Muhammad every third month in the Muslim calendar. This week on My Culture, we focus on Maulidi festivities. Lamu Island has been in existence from the 7th century, making it rich with culture and history of a people set in a stone town in this ancient time. Maulidi celebrations held annually in the county brings visitors and pilgrims to Lamu from far fields for recitals of praise poems, music and dances, calligraphy and art exhibits, dough and donkey races, swimming competitions and finally a lively parade that wades through the narrow alleys of the town lined by cheering crowds. Na yote tunafanya ili kuvutia watali na unajua hiyo pia huwa ni kitega uchumi kwa watu wetu wa lamu ma hoteli anapata biashara mama mboga wanauza wavuvi wanauza wenye majahazi uh, wa kuna biashara ya kutembeza watalii uh, kwa hivyo uh, hizi sherehe uh, huwa ni kitega uchumi kikubwa uh, kwa watu wa lamu hii ni sherehe adhimu kwa watu wa lamu hususan kwenye masala ya kiuchumi ama masuala ya kuenzi tamaduni zetu haswa hasa watu wenye kuogelea wenye majahazi mashindano kwenye mambo ya mashindano ya punda The Islamic festival is held during the third month of the Muslim calendar to celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad Hii ni moja katika kumbukumbu ambazo ya kuweza kila wakati wa mwezi huu ambao kwamba inakuwa ni mwezi wa kumi na huwa ni mwezi wa Kiislamu ni mfungo sita ambao ndio mwezi alozaliwa Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam kwa hivyo huwa tunasherekea mazazi yake kwa kila mwaka ili kuweza kuweka kumbukumbu hizi za vizazi vitakapokuja The festival involves music Veneration and religious recitals, the residents take part in various community team building competitions such as swimming, dough and donkey races, hina competitions and tag of war. Kwa leo tumeandalia mashindano ambao tumeweza kushindana mashindano ya punda, yameweza kuandaliwa mashindano ya uogeleaji, mashindano ya mashua, mashindano ya kuhifadhi kurwani. Kwa hivyo hii yote ni katika njia ya kuleta ule utamaduni wetu sisi kama jamii wa Lamu. The festival is accompanied by local traditional dances and the Goma dance is the most popular. It involves men standing with walking sticks and dancing to the rhythmic drum beats. Another group of men stage a mock fight involving traditional carved Arabic swords, all dancing systematically to the beat of drums. Goma la panga, hawa waitwa ni goma la siu. Kwa hivyo sisi ni moja katika kuona ile panga tunaoteza kwa sababu taonyesha kwamba ndio silaha ambao wazee wetu walikuwa kipiga kuwa kipigana na maadui ambao ni wagala tumepigana na Portuguese kwamba silaha zilikuwa ni hizi panga kabla hazijaja bunduki A night prayer vigil is also held around the mosque alternated with chanting and narrating the life of Prophet Muhammad accompanied by a song and dance session On the last day of Maulidi there is a procession of boys and men holding hands into the town 
When they reach the town center, the crowd burst into song and dance. The ceremony is inviting and visitors are allowed to join in. The residents compete and display awesome work in Swahili poetry, Quranic recitals, Hina painting, board games, indoor racing, cross-country racing, swimming and football. The donkey race is a major factor in the festival as the animal is a great symbol of Lamo's culture and so this race is held in awe. Reporting for My Culture, I'm Jackie Wambiru. Differently. My loss of sight did something interesting. It, it came as a challenge to prove my worth. This training is very vital to us, uh, more so the, the Department of Security. We are the people who are receiving mostly people with disability and uh, he has given us a wide knowledge. You can only get help when you talk about your problem. But if you keep it to yourself, then that problem will not be solved. So I would encourage them, if they belong to any congregation, to go share it with the leadership and see what the leadership can do. We're differently abled, differently. The legends and familiar chants will grace KBC once again. Don't Very good evening to you. Thank you for keeping it easy Friday on Channel One. My name is Betty Kiptum. Let's get the business news. The government plans to increase land under irrigation, deploy smart agricultural practices and enhance value addition for agricultural produce to deal with the current food crisis. Deputy President Rugadi Gashagwa says this will be achieved through public partnerships to reduce dependence on costly food importations. In August, Kenya's annual inflation rate hit a five-year high of 8.3%, driven by food, transport and fuel prices. This has affected poor households more due to stagnation in wages and shrinking income in rural areas. Now the government has called on manufacturers to ramp up food production if the country is to become food secure. We are saying that our focus to turn around this economy is increased productivity in all sectors, manufacturing, agriculture, all increased productivity must go in tandem with enhanced market. Those lands, nature has not been very kind because there isn't good distribution of rain. That being the situation, I believe over the years in our country, many things have been done. But Your Excellency, it looks like there is something we have to do differently. East African breweries, 30 million shillings. Speaking at a humanitarian initiative fundraising event organized by local manufacturers, manufacturers have singled out mechanization of agriculture as a critical pillar in addressing food insecurity in the country. There is an increasing interest to transform our agriculture sector as one of the critical sectors in the Kenya's development. The sector is particularly critical, is particularly critical for driving Kenya's food security. However, experts say that Kenya's non-competitive agricultural industrial sector continues to hurt Kenya's ability to feed itself. Um, we are used when we were growing up to Uganda complaining about Kenya. Now we are even complaining about Tanzania. We have to stop this culture of complaining and really look down at our competitiveness. If you are not competitive, if you are not competitive, don't expect mercy from the government of Kenya. 
Currently, maize production is expected to be 10 to 15 percent below the five-year average due to the late onset of rainfall and irregular distribution of rainfall throughout the season. To deal with the shortage, the government says the country needs to win itself from reliance on rain-fed agriculture. The dire situation we are in calls for robust, sustainable and long-lasting solutions to drive Kenya into an agricultural powerhouse. Alan Oko, Easy Friday. And ICT and Digital Economy Cabinet Secretary Elio Dawalo has placed kick-starting the digital superhighway project and laying off an additional 100,000 kilometers of the national fiber optic network at the top of his priority list. While taking over the reins from his predecessor, Joe Musheru, the new ICT and Digital Economy Cabinet Secretary vowed to enhance the transparency in government operations through direct contact centers for Kenyans and revitalization of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, Kenya News Agency, and the Postal Corporation of Kenya. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, while taking over the Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy, Cabinet Secretary Elio Dowalo committed to continue the heavy investments the country has made in the ICT sector in matters broadband connectivity. Owalo says even though Kenya has made major strides in establishing itself as a leader in the region, internet connectivity in the country is still at about 45%. We have been charged with the responsibility to play the leading role in this pursuit. We are expected to realize the technological dream, not just for the ministry, but the country at large. Sometimes it's uh, not always uh, positive, but... Um, they always mean well, and uh, I think you will, uh, you will enjoy as I have done. Owalo says he will hit the ground running by shaking up the broadcasting sector, stating that he will take a keen interest in upgrading the national broadcaster, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. We are going to thoroughly shake up the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation by way of re-engineering and rejuvenating it and breathe fresh life in it. The national broadcaster must step up to the plate. It must punch at its right weight in the marketplace. Its revitalization is therefore not just imperative but a matter of priority that we intend to embark on almost immediately. In addition, Owalo said he will ensure universal broadband connectivity to every part of the country in the next five years and the immediate launch of the Digital Superhighway Project. I've come to lead in facilitating Kenya's economic transformation by leveraging upon ICT for competitiveness and sustainable development. On Matters Youth, he pledged to facilitate mass digital jobs through talent incubation programs, through the distribution of 23,000 virtual devices in Tibet, as well as fast-track digitization of government services for a paperless society. It's a ministry that uh, engages uh, with the young people uh, who are majority of this uh, country. And, you know, you are always going to engage, whether it's on social media, Owalo also committed to prioritize the enactment of the Konza Technopolis Bill, the ICT Authority Bill, and development of an e-commerce strategy. And for the Ministry of ICT, it's a new dawn with digital economy shakeups, policy changes, and a revitalization of institutions. Hibak Said for Easy Friday. Thank you, Hibak, for that report. Now, engineers in the country have appealed to the government to ensure that infrastructure projects in the country are undertaken only by engineering professionals. The engineers also want to be involved in policy formulation and execution, especially in the public sector, for the purposes of strengthening the profession, as well as expediting realization of the infrastructure goal of the Vision 2030 agenda. Weekly for Catch reports of consulting engineers of Kenya came to an end in Kisumu. The attending engineering professionals been pointed an emerging trend of some quarters outside the engineering profession attempting to dictate the practice. We have a system of certifying so we have we have To reverse the trend, the engineers petitioned the relevant government agencies for protection. Petition the national, the national and county governments too. One, adapt performance-based contracting PBC for road maintenance 
be reform management of the agencies in the water sector, and C, explore and adopt on other financial models for infrastructure funding, including the existing funds, especially, uh, specifically like the pension fund, and more use of the PPP partnership, uh, private, uh, public private partnership. The engineering professionals want both levels of government to involve them fully in the formulation and execution of policies touching on Kenya's Vision 2030 infrastructure goal. It was resolved that the ASEC shall petition the national and county governments to ensure that one, local content is applied rigorously in all projects to ensure that Kenyan engineering firms benefit from Kenyan projects. Two, engineers who are publicly public public officers in the national and county governments, public enterprises, universities, and parastatos are paid an unpracticing allowance in line with the current practice for doctors and other health professionals. Number three, engineering professionals are appointed to public infrastructure dockets. Ladies and gentlemen, we are committed to enhancing engineering practice for a safe, efficient, and effective engineering infrastructure processes and systems in Kenya. The board intends to upscale the number of engineers to 10,000 by the year 2027 to meet the recommended UN ratio of 1 to 5,000. At the same time, contractors and project owners were called upon to strictly follow the requirements for project registration, including securing insurance policies for their projects. A lot of contractors uh, don't take this policy because it's not been uh, enforced. Uh, this is uh, rather, uh, you know, a rather risky undertaking, and you need to have that uh, insurance to make sure that you complete the project to have the financial stability and uh, uh, protect you against any damages or loss. For Easy Friday from Kisumu County, I am Weekly Okage. That story by Weekly for Kech closes the business this evening on Easy Friday. But of course, sports news is coming up with Karen Kibet. Do have yourself a lovely night. My name is Betty Kiptoon. Bye bye. Welcome back to Easy Friday. Let's now take a look at what's making headlines in the world of sports. My name is Karen Kibet. The new sports cabinet secretary, Ababu Namwamba, says his first assignment is to get Kenyan football back on track and wage a war against doping cartels. Namwamba on Friday took over the leadership of the sports ministry from Ambassador Amina Mohammed in a ceremony held at the Kenya National Library in Nairobi. Namwamba is making a return to the ministry he served in during the Grand Coalition government in 2012. Speaking after handing over ceremony, New Sports Cabinet Secretary Ababu Namwamba promised to work without bias or partiality to motivate players of various sports in the country. 
we want to immediately get down on dealing with the FIFA imbroglio, the imbroglio around FKF. I have been sufficiently briefed by the Cabinet Secretary, and I believe I will be paying very keen attention to the measures that have already been proposed, put in place, so that we can find a solution to this gridlock. Ababu also pointed out that he will now start working as soon as possible to solve various issues dragging the growth of sports in the country. We want right away to get onto this doping crisis. We have such a fine image as a sporting nation. And we cannot allow the greed, the misconduct of a few people to destroy this hard-earned image of Kenya as a fine sporting nation that plays by the rules. Outgoing Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohamed urged Ababu to do his best to defend the rights of players and not to hesitate to punish those who violate the legal norms of sport. Uh, it's about the um, challenges of, of all of us growing up together, working as a team, uh, challenges of loss, uh, but a lot of gain as well, and, and challenges of overcoming all that and knowing that the show must always, always go on. Nothing should stop it. The event was held one day after the swearing in of the cabinet secretaries, thus they at State of Nairobi, after being approved by the National Assembly Appointments Committee. For Easy Friday Sports, I'm Daniel Mwendwa. Thank you, Dan, for that detailed report. Moving on, the Kenya Volleyball Federation Nairobi County on Friday held a high school coaches workshop aimed at generating positive perception in sports in the country. The workshop is being held at the Moi International Sports Center in Kasarani and will end on Sunday, having attracted more than 20 coaches from different parts of the country. Kenya Volleyball Federation Nairobi County Chairman Moses Mbudia says organizing the training after the completion of the East African High School Games is a proof that they remain focused and ready to improve the sports in high school and other institutions. You and I know very well that Kenya did not do well uh, in, during the Arusha Games and I think uh, one of the areas that we didn't score very well is the capacity building. That is why behind us here we have uh, the uh, 18 teachers being taught by very international referees international coaches with the name of uh, trying to make sure that uh, we do well in the next season. Mbudi also called on the Minister of Sport that assumed office today to organize several national competitions for the youth as a way of motivating and shaping careers. Volleyball we might have done very well but don't forget that uh, we won the we won the, the main team by a week because uh, it would have gone to Rwanda. Rwandese were the defending champions. So what we also want is though we won in volleyball we want to remain at that level. His words were echoed by one of the trainers, Miss Nancy Wangome, who called on the introduction of psychological mentorship programs for the athletes in the country. When it comes to performance in sports in Africa, we are stronger. We dominate. Black people dominate sports globally. If you look at the American basketball team, it's black people. And so it's, for me, it's the missing link in Africa. Because once you begin to think right and you begin to win the game in the mind, then we will begin to harness all the other resources, our bodies, our very good weather, and every, uh, our food that is so fantastic. That the workshop is being held at the Moi International Sports Center Kasrani and will end on Sunday, having attracted more than 20 coaches from different parts of the country. Senegal hitman Sadio Mane uh, believes Argentina are strong favorites to win the 2022 World Cup set to be held in Qatar. Mane says Argentina's captain Lionel Messi and his compatriots have the capacity to lift this year's World Cup. Messi has been in a uh, prof prolific form this season, registering 11 goals and 12 assists in 16 matches for PSG in all competitions. The World Cup finals will be exclusively televised live on KBC Channel 1 and on our radios beginning on the 20th of November through to 18th of December 2022. World Cup Eco KBC. Higher, higher, higher.
Bayern Munich forward Sadio Mane has backed Argentina to win the upcoming FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Argentina captain Lionel Messi has notably been a prolific form this season, registering 11 goals and 12 assists in 16 matches for Paris Saint-Germain in all competitions. He has scored 10 goals and 2 assists in last